Welcome to Trinity Bible Study. In our last session, we started into Acts chapter 16 and saw the conversion of a very prominent woman by the name of Lydia in the city of Philippi. And she was so enthusiastic that she invited Paul and his ministry team to live with her while she was there and probably had the means to support them. And we're going to pick up in verse 16 as Paul and the gentlemen who are with him in ministry are going through the city of Philippi. <clears throat> Verse 16, And it happened that as they were going to the place of prayer, a certain slave girl, having a spirit of divination, met us, who was bringing her masters much profit by fortune-telling. And following after Paul and us, she kept crying out, saying, These men are, bond are bondservants of the Most High God, who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. <clears throat> right off the bat, that doesn't sound like a bad thing to happen. This is obviously a girl who is good at doing her job. She is a psychic. She is a palm reader. She is a fortune teller. All of these things uh, have been from of old and are carried even up into our culture. And uh, she works on the other side for the enemy. And yet, she's kind of following Paul and the boys around. And she's saying, these guys represent the Most High God and they're bringing to you salvation. What is she doing? It sounds contradictory, but on the other hand, it sounds like she's telling the truth and trying to kind of, shall we say, advertise these guys. Okay, let's continue as we read on in verse 18. And she continued doing this for many days, but Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very moment. Wow. Paul discerned what was going on. And here's what happens. So many times we don't understand what's going on around us by the Spirit. Paul knew in his heart this girl wasn't right because of what she did, not what she said. Now this is an interesting parallel to what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew when he said not everyone who says Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not what we say as much as it's what we do and it's important to say the right thing if your heart's motivated and your actions portray it. But this girl here was very obviously working on the occult side of everything. She was working for the evil and she was making big money at it. And yet she was trying to kind of play both sides against the middle. And uh, she was giving lip service to Paul, but definitely she was not involved in the same spiritual side of the battle that he was. And he recognized it, and immediately he calls the spirit out of her. Notice he doesn't come down on her as a person. He understands what's going on, and he calls that spirit out of her. Something not many people are willing to do in ministry today, because we're so afraid of offending people, and we shouldn't be. We should recognize the spirit in that person. Now, that does not mean that this girl was demonically possessed, big difference, but she was definitely being used by demonic spirits. Okay, And this is interesting to understand because when you get this right, you can separate the difference between the spiritual entity in the person and the person. And that's what we must do. We don't condemn people. We identify the spirit that they're catering to or that they have allowed to work in their lives and we take that out of them. And that gives them an open door to receive the Holy Spirit and the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. We'll pick up in verse 19. But when her masters saw that their hope for profit was gone, we're talking about money again, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. And when they had brought them to the chief magistrates, they said, These men are throwing our city into confu confusion, being Jews. So they were not only talking about the spiritual reality of them, but they were also saying, hey, these guys are Jews. And of course, Jews in this particular region were a, a minority, and they oftentimes were a very wealthy minority, and they were resented by the Gentiles. Okay, So this is kind of where this is all coming from. <clears throat> 
verse 21, and uh, are proclaiming customs which it is not lawful for us to accept or, reserve, or, or observe as Romans. And the crowd rose up together against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. Now, this is not a uh, punishment you want to undergo. Believe me, if you don't want to feel pain, you don't want to feel these rods, because they were beaten with big rods and metal rods and wooden rods with spikes on them. And it was, it was a very severe beating. <clears throat> And when they had, in verse 23, and when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such a command, threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, this was a custom that happened when we knew there was going to be an execution the next day. These, the jailer knew these guys were dead. And uh, when he was ordered to uh, keep them securely, he knew what to do. And this is not uncommon. This is a normal practice in Roman cities, uh, loyal cities, as was Philippi. The prison uh, was always built in kind of either a U-shape or a circular shape. And in the middle of the prison was what was called the innermost sanctum or the innermost prison, which in reality was a septic tank for the other cells to drain into. And the reason they secured people into this septic tank was so they would die overnight. I mean, you have to understand, Paul and Silas have been beaten severely. I mean, bloodied. Their backs, their arms, their sides, everything. They've been beaten. They're bleeding. And then they're put into a septic tank, basically, a, a place where all the sewage drains into from the prison. Okay, this sounds gross, but this is the way they worked, knowing that if they put them in there and secured them in there so they couldn't crawl out of this pit that was probably two to four feet deep. Yes, two to four feet deep. And imagine the stench and their backs and sides and arms are bleeding. You put them in there overnight, they're going to be dead in the morning. There's just no other way. Now, this is an interesting scenario because we're going to stop right here and let this settle in our hearts overnight so that when we pick up again in our next session, we will understand a little bit better why what happens in our next session took place, where it happens, and why they did it. Now, remember, these guys physically are beaten down and then they're thrown in a septic tank and secured in there in stocks. There's a reason they did it. And we'll find out what the options and what really ends up happening and how miraculous that is in our next session. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the word that you have given us. Thank you for the many illustrations of faith and even the many illustrations of how you work in very perilous times and situations and circumstances. We thank you. We praise you. We give you honor. And we ask you to just continue to work in our hearts as we read and study. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And under his authority we pray.